Tina's with us in D.C. Hi, Tina. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Your question for Dr. John. Okay. I have a brother who's 49 years old. He's on dialysis, Mm. which takes three to four hours, Mm -hmm. about four times a week. He used to live with my mom until a month ago when she passed away. Mm. Um, And when he lived with her, I would occasionally help them out financially. He is on disability. He gets a little over $600 a month. Um, he is married. His wife works inconsistently. They've, they're a one-car family, and they have an 18-year-old who lives with them. Hmm. So when they had to move out of my mom's apartment because the lease was done and it was in her name, I actually paid for a week for them at a hotel, like a real cheapo kind of place, and, then, and I told them I, I was done. I wasn't helping anymore because... I felt like they didn't try to help themselves when yeah. they had yeah. a free place to stay for years. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I, I miss my mom. Um, I am financially okay. I can help. But to me, that kind of help is like, okay, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and your car breaks down, and you need your car to get to work. So I help you get it repaired, and not, and you go back on with your life. Mm-hmm. But they just can't keep it together, and it's, a, it's just heart-wrenching because he, he really doesn't, He's probably not going to live a long life. I mean, he's probably got another year or two. Mm. But Tina, I'm sorry about your mom. Thank you. And I know that's heavy. Um, let's let's hold over to the break, and we'll talk through this when we get back. We're talking with Tina in D.C. and her brother. Her mom just passed away, and her brother's on dialysis, and uh, his family, with his 18-year-old son and his wife, not working much. Um, are struggling financially and continually coming to her, and she occasionally helps. And that's mm-hmm. is that a fair summary of what you told us, Tina? Yes. Okay. Tina, does your brother have any other kids? Is it just the one 18 year old? He has two others, and they have found a way to make life work. They're better adults at adulting than he and his mm-hmm. wife are. Mm-hmm. So, a couple of things. Um, Dave and I were talking about through the break. I think um, first and foremost for you is to make sure that your grieving process, the way you find meaning in this grief, is not going to be floating somebody else's bad decisions or somebody else's bad behavior, which is different from being sick. And I hope that you catch the nuance there. Does that make sense? Yes, because he had financial problems before he was sick. Okay. So I, I do. Um, and it's, I, the, the temptation for all of us is when we are reeling from grief, you just lost your mom, he, he, you mentioned that your brother may have 12 months, may have 18 months, the temptation is going to try to swoop in and try to save this thing and try to be the hero here. And man, we can if we don't have some clear boundaries on our end, we can find ourselves so overextended and then just in a big mess. Um, and so... Dave mentioned some great things off the year, thinking about um, we'll give you Financial Peace University and you sit down with them and say, hey, here's, I'll be able to help you this much money at this time when you finish this plan. We're going to give you a a, a carrot here and then we're going to support you here. But it all comes back to you creating really healthy boundaries for yourself, knowing that you're not in a good place right now because your mom just passed away and you're looking at grieving the loss of your brother. How do you communicate that in a loving way? Like, I want to maintain the relationships I have with him and his children. Yeah. That, that's a choice that they How have to I make too. You know, what what I what I have done in these situations is I just sit down and I lead with, um, "I love you," mm-hmm. and your you know mom's loss is breaking my heart, and your health is breaking my heart, and also um, your choices with money are something I can't support. Uh, so here's the thing: I can help you guys financially only if you are taking steps that are going to heal your finances. I cannot be giving a drunk a drink because that's not me loving you well. I love you too much to participate in your misbehavior with money by giving you money so you can misbehave. But if you'll do some things and start to make some steps through healing this, uh, go this class, I'll pay for it. Uh, and, and I'll, you know, at the, as soon as you complete that, um, I, I, you know, I'm going to give you $1,000. But I'm not going to just randomly give you money. Oh, and by the way, you go, you guys, uh, the 18-year-old and the wife have got to get a job immediately. And if you're mm-hmm. unwilling to do those things, I still love you. But you need to know I can't give you money if you're unwilling to work and you're unwilling to work on your money management skills because that's enabling. 
And Tina, you've got to be prepared for them to not be able to hear that. Yeah, they, they, there's a high probability they're only going to get angry. All you care about is money. You don't care about us. Now that mom's gone, you, you're not you, a good you. Christian. That's all that right. stuff. Yeah. So connection goes two ways. I almost, I almost feel like my brother, he won't say that. He'll just emotionally kind of shut down. And and he's not emotionally strong enough and never has been to get his wife to do the things she needs to be doing. Yeah. And so there's no, they, and, they've and never had to. Yeah. They've never had to. They lived it. They lived rent free. You help step in and help. So they've never had to do that. Pouting is not going to work. Hmm. But you can't carry that pain. You can't carry that burden. What you have to come to the table with is a clear plan for yourself and your heart and say, here's who I'm going to be, and I'm going to love you. The, the problem is, and I say this all the time, but I, I, it's something I personally have walked through. The problem is when people that are grown-ups are doing stupid things, you have to admit stupid is not illegal. Hmm. You can't make them stop. And it just, it's hard. It's hard. But uh, we'll, I tell you what, hold on, Kelly will pick up. We'll pay for Financial Peace University. But every time, charity is I am participating in someone's healing. Enabling is I'm giving them money in spite of their bad behavior, and they're buying drugs with it. They're buying alcohol with it. They're buying, they're, I'm financing their misbehavior and their inability to face their things. So his wife needs to get a job. The 18-year-old needs to get a job tomorrow. And they need to be on a written budget and be on a plan and be willing to show you all of that. And by the way, if they do all that, they won't need you. Hmm. They won't need you. They won't have. They won't need you financially. And Tina's got to get a community, get a friend, get a pastor, yeah. get somebody to work through the passing of her mom, the slow well, passing here's of the her thing. brother. You start to feel crazy when you're dealing crazy. Yeah. If you don't have somebody out there going, because we're sitting here saying your assessment of the situation is accurate. And you need someone to tell you that after you have sit down with them because you're going to come away going, well, I'm just a mean person. Mm -hmm. You're just mean. I had somebody tell me that one. You're just mean. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's hard not to get in the car and think, yeah. did I handle that right? Am did I, I say the right I mean? thing? Am I mean? No, I'm not mean. And you, lay, and you, you, you set that on the death of your mom. That gets heavy. It gets heavy. It really does. Mm.